This is The Philosophical Angle, and I am your host, Chris Angle. We discuss topics in current media. With us today are our uh, guests, Mark Brennan, a professor of finance at New York University. Welcome, Mark. Hi, Chris. And Rick Samuelson. Rick has an MBA from Wharton and is an, an independent investor. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. Each week we take a concept in current media and explore. And this week we're going to talk about an article in the Journal of Medical Ethics, first published on February 23rd of this year, the title of which is After Birth Abortion. Why Should the Baby Live? This article was discussed first on the Glenn Beck TV and radio programs. To summarize the article, it says the following, quote, to bring up children might be an unbearable burden on the family and on society. As a whole, when the state economically provides for their care on these grounds, the fact that a fetus has the potential to become a person will have an, at least, acceptable life is no reason for prohibiting abortion." Unquote. Further quote, it states, therefore we argue that when circumstances occur after birth such that they would have justified abortion, after birth abortion should be permissible." Unquote. Another section of the article states, and I quote, in spite of the oxymoron in the expression, we propose to call this practice after birth abortion rather than infanticide, intent to emphasize that the moral status of the individual killed is comparable with that of a fetus on which abortions in the traditional sense are performed rather than to that of a child." Unquote. The article goes on to state, and I quote again, there are two reasons which taken together justify this claim. One, the moral status of an infant is equivalent to that of a fetus, and that is, neither can be considered a person in a morally relevant sense. Two, it is not permissible to damage a newborn by preventing her from pre developing the potentiality to become a person in the morally relevant sense." Unquote. Further in the uh, article, <coughs> the moral status of an infant is equivalent to that of the fetus in the sense that both lack these properties that justify the attribution of a right to life of an individual. Both a fetus and a newborn certainly are human beings and potential persons, but neither is a person in the sense of subject of a moral right to life." Unquote. The article concludes, and I quote again, therefore the rights and interests of the actual people involved should represent the prevailing consideration in a decision about abortion and after birth abortion. It states further that a consequence of this position is that the interest of actual people override the interest of merely potential people to become actual ones." Unquote. The article states that there, uh, the authors, focus is on the right to become a particular person. The article states that this is because, quote, merely potential people cannot be harmed by not being brought into existence since non-persons have no moral rights to life, 
there are no reasons for banning afterbirth abortions, unquote. It concludes that, quote, the same reasons that justify abortion should also justify the killing of the potential person when it is at this stage of a newborn, unquote. Since the authors have used the words mor ethically moral in the essay, the philosophical angle needs to define these terms in order to understand whether the conclusions reached are justifiable. First, a moral is any behavior that is good. And secondly, ethics is the appropriate dispensation of respect. And we've made some notes on this. An example would be when you are respectful to your parents, you are behaving ethically. The essence of respect is the consideration of the other. That is, the more one considers the other important, the more one respects the other. For example, you'll respect your parents because they brought you up. You respect your music collection because it provides enjoyment. The nature of and reason for respect is to allow us, as humans, to be able to cooperate with each other. When we respect someone and consider them important, this effectuates the ability to cooperate. And we cooperate to be able to produce goods and services, which brings us up away from misery. And anything that takes us up away from misery is the essence of that which is good. We mentioned that morals are good behavior. And therefore, moral behavior are actions that take us up away from misery. That said, we may now analyze the essay. And again, I want to repeat that this essay was a paper in the Journal of Medical Ethics, published on February 23rd. The authors state, quote, the same reasons for which justify abortion should also justify the killing of the potential person who it is at the stage of newborn, unquote. If we apply our definition of ethics, we now know that the authors have no respect and thus do not consider potentiality important. However, the philosophical angle suspects that this is not the case. In reality, we suspect that the authors do consider potentiality very important. For example, we suspect that when the authors submitted this paper to the JME, that before, during, and after submission, the process prior to acceptance of publication, that is during the phase when the paper has the potential to become published, that they were very respectful of the JME journal and its editors. And therefore, they considered potentiality important to them as they wanted to cooperate with the journal to get their paper published. And since potentiality has importance with respect to their paper, human life, we dare say, would have at least as much importance as a paper for the JME. The philosophical angle suspects that the authors have erred in their conclusion because this importance is due commensurate respect. Further, the authors state that the same reasons which justify abortion should also justify the killing of the potential person, even at the stage of a newborn. However, as a human develops from a cell to a fully developed baby, the philosophical angle states that the human being's potentiality grows accordingly. And as such, the respect that is due to its developing correspondingly grows. So this conclusion of the paper is false. Also, the same reasoning follows when they state, quote, 
Therefore, we claim that killing a newborn would be ethically permissible in all the circumstances where abortion could be. Such circumstances include cases with a newborn that has the potential to have an at least acceptable life, but the well-being of the family is at risk. The philosophical ang angle emphatically states that as the baby develops, so does its potentiality, and therefore the respect that is due to it also develops. Moreover, they concluded that the alleged right of the individuals, such as fetuses and newborns, to develop their potentiality is overridden by the interest of actual people to pursue their own well-being. However, the parents initiated a contract with the newborn being of their own free will when they freely established its life. And as the new human being grows, the contract with the human becomes commensurately stronger. <coughs> and in place, along with the rights of the new human being, as all rights exist within agreements, contracts, and covenants. Thus, the philosophical angle concludes that what is stated in the paper is utter nonsense. And so, we'd like to go to our panel and see uh, their response. Mark, uh, since this was uh, your topic initially, I'd love to uh, hear your uh, thoughts on the matter. Well, I think when you proposed the topic, I said, what are we going to discuss? Right. I think there's not a lot to discuss, uh, you know, if we're talking about uh, killing people who are just a little bit smaller than the rest of us or a little bit less able to defend themselves. Um, but I guess w one thing that caught me when you were talking was this potentiality bit. Uh, maybe we should just start killing anybody who doesn't have the potential to run a four minute mile or bench, five, bench press 500 pounds. You know, that, that could be an, another arbitrary hurdle that we could put up to start winnowing the herd and bringing society down to a more, a more manageable size, which seems to be these people's ultimate goal. It almost as if uh, the uh, the word eugenics uh, pops up here uh, into the conversation, and uh, and ideas of the uh, of uh, of what uh, of what was initiated uh, in the 1930s in Germany, possibly. No, uh, you don't have to, you don't have, you don't have to look across the ocean, Chris. You talk about Margaret Sanger in this country, and the eugenics movement here. Um, you can look at the Buck versus Bell decision when when uh, you know Oliver Wendell Holmes. The brilliant Oliver Wendell Holmes, the second most quoted legal jurist in American history, said that three generations of morons is enough, uh, and we started sterilizing uh, retarded people. So uh, this sick mentality pervades our culture and has for a long time. Uh, maybe you could uh, initiate the audience to uh, who Margaret Sanger is. Uh, Margaret Sanger, let's just call her uh, an American eugenicist, raised Catholic. Uh, married Mr. Sanger and was uh, key in founding Planned Parenthood. Right. Okay, and uh, Rick, do um, you have any response to the article? Or? Well, uh, you know, like any of these absurd intellectual constructs, it, it, this one's easy to shoot down, but I think the more interesting question here is why would, what are the cultural circumstances under which educated persons would actually propose something this outlandish? And I suppose if you cast your mind back over the last 40 years since really the 60s and the advent of the me generation and the ever grinding progress of the quote unquote, quote unquote liberal agenda, uh, I suppose this is just a logical extension of the ultimate celebration of me over family, 
serving society, uh, ensuring the survival and flourishing of future generations. I mean, if, if in that context, it seems just like uh, yet another incremental uh, step in that direction. Okay. Chris, I think I, take, I would take it back uh, probably to the 90s, but uh, the 1790s in the French Revolution. These kind of idiotic ideas and the things that came out in the 60s uh, kind of trace, a lot of the bad isms we have in the world today trace their roots back to the French Revolution, where we decided that they're, you know, man is smarter than God, there is no such thing as tradition, family, historic institutions have just be, got to be done away with, you know, we're going to start the slate clean, and so idiotic ideas like Rick was just detailing came to fruition. Uh, what, in, what, um, uh, in what sense did they start in the French Revolution? Uh, can, the, can we go to uh, any particular literature or, uh, or um, documents that were uh, uh, generated at the time that, that can indicate this, uh, the genesis of this thought process? Uh, back that far? Well, sure, there are entire libraries written on this. Um, but just you know, just pick up any good piece of Jacobin literature from the time, and you'll see this all in clear black and white. Hmm. So actually, so now let's let's take a step back. This 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 might this is what these people are posing might just be the guillotine of the modern age. Mm hmm. Interesting. So let's take a step back and go uh, where. Where is abortion permissible? Is it, or if at all, it is. What do you think, guys? If uh, we've established that, of course, after birth abortion. I mean, there are some very heart-rending cases, Chris, where a doctor is uh, put in the position, and my father was a doctor, of having to choose between saving the life of a mother uh, or that of the child uh, where there are other, you know, extreme situations like this where a decision has to be taken. Uh, and you can argue that case either way, frankly, all right? Uh, my prejudice is to view a future generation as being actually more important than the current generation. The fact of the matter is we all die, all right? We all die. Uh, how you meet your death is what matters, and how you live your life while you're living is what matters. And if we are a, if we are a society that has reached the point where we can't place the interests of future generations ahead of our own, then it, it, it will follow, as night follows day, that we don't have much of a future. Well said. But except except for those special situations where there may be a medical emergency or something like that, you know, abortion should be extremely rare. Okay, here, Chris, here. It, it, you can even look at uh, the Catholic Church's position on this, which is probably, you know, the, the, the most, I don't know if the word is dogmatic or just kind of set in stone on when it's okay. And even the Catholic Church allows it in the case of saving the life of the mother. But with the proviso, and, and always keeping in mind the concept of double effect. So there are certain acts that appear to be immoral that the Catholic Church would argue and philosophers would argue are okay under the concept of double effect, but they're few and far between. This one case would probably reach it. But I think most people today just don't have a problem with abortion in any way, shape, or form, or those who don't have a problem with abortion in any way, shape, or form, just don't consider uh, anybody outside of the womb, anybody inside the womb to be a human. They don't believe that, you know, this spectrum, that, that humanity is, a, it, life is a spectrum going from, you know, fertilized egg to, the, to natural death. They prefer to draw the line somewhere else. And, you know, that's where the debate is really about. Is, is, it, a, is, it, is it a human being with all its attendant rights, or is it just a you know, collection of cells. Okay, and so um, we've uh, probably taken it's, on a pragmatic. Right? I always have these afterthoughts. It's it's odd that uh, 
in most states, if you kill a pregnant woman, you will be charged with two murders, not just one. So the law is horribly inconsistent there. Oh, good point. Um, so let's, uh, so we've, we've discovered one point at which, pragmatically speaking, uh, an abortion might be uh, acceptable ethically, where the life of the mother is in danger, and even the Catholic Church, as we mentioned, uh, uh, agrees with this. Uh, in what cases, how about in the case of rape? What do you think, guys? In that case, can an abortion be ethically permissible? Silence. I hear silence. A deafening silence. Step well, forward. Let's, let's keep, what's interesting, Chris, is you know there's actually a shortage of uh, potential babies to be adopted, uh, and there are more couples out there. I mean, so that's why couples are importing Chinese babies uh, and kids from Peru and so forth. There's actually potentially adoptable babies. Uh, so I, I guess my view on the matter is wherever possible. If a child is has been conceived, uh, the woman, for whatever and, and for whatever reason she's pregnant, should be encouraged, strongly encouraged, and uh, under pretty narrow uh, legal uh, parameters, to have the child and give it up for adoption. Yeah, Chris, I, I, go ahead. I was think I was thinking silent just because I, I think you know that the case is obvious from a logical perspective. If you think that life begins at conception, then it really doesn't matter how or why it was conceived, whether it was through rape or whatever. You don't destroy an innocent life. You don't take an innocent life, whether it was conceived through rape or through, you know, a loving marriage. I But if you okay. but if you don't think it's a life, then it's fine to put an end to it. You can put an end to it because it was a product of a rape, you can put an end to it because you don't like its gender. Or you can put it to an end to it because you think that the zodiac sign it might be born under isn't quite your cup of tea. So we're really talking about apples and oranges here. Uh, that's true, and that's why I believe that under rape, uh, it still would be permissibly ethically permissible um, uh, for uh, to have the the uh, the mother uh, to go ahead and freely choose to have an abortion in this case. Because so would you would you would you would you be okay for uh, abortion as a means of gender selection? Let me let me complete my uh, thought here, and the reason is uh, that no contract uh, was initiated, and uh, uh, therefore no uh, and all rights uh, are housed in contracts. With uh, when the uh, under normal circumstances, all rights, are, all rights are housed in contracts. Are you correct. kidding me? Yeah. Okay. Let, let, let's go back to my question. That that was just that was. We'll edit that out when this goes on the air. Are you? Do you support abortion in the case of gender selection? Um, I'm afraid if, uh, if, if, I don't you're understand. About to have, you're about to, You live in China. You're about to have a girl. You don't like a girl. You don't want a girl. It's it's not the way it works in China. Let's put an end to it. Is that okay? Uh, of course not, because uh, the uh, parents freely uh, uh, tried to have uh, a, an impregnation. Uh, freely got a conception, uh, therefore the child freely has a, a, a right to live and uh, uh, and should be uh, allowed to go to term. Okay, what, what about what about a woman who's carrying twins, product of a rape, one's male, one's female, she'd like to harvest the female? Uh, unpermissible or impermissible because of the same. Once she goes, uh, she says yes to one, uh, because it's then it's a contract, and uh, uh, she freely decides to be able to go forward with it. And if that I sign is, a contract that, with with Rick, that doesn't give you any rights or obligations. She freely. So she, she she signs a contract. She forms a contract with the male fetus that says nothing about the female fetus. And by the way, it's a separate umbilical cord. Uh, it's a separate separate genetic code. So to tell me that you know by me signing a contract with Rick, I, I'm therefore obligated to do some certain things with you, doesn't even make legal sense. No, the the, the problem here is that uh, the freedom has uh, uh, her liberty has decided that she will enable 
that enables her to make the decision, yes, uh, the, the human life or lives are acceptable, and so she can go forward with it. But uh, a discriminatory, uh, 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 selective uh, uh, choice is then uh, eliminating the part of the freedom and uh, therefore is uh, unethical in this case. So, uh, and, and that's why I believe the, the rape uh, is, uh, is uh, ethically permissible to terminate uh, in a, 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 uh, the life of the child because she, f she was n not given her own freedom uh, to, uh, uh, to go ahead and uh, produce uh, life. Uh, and I think that is the key element here in order to be able to determine whether it's ethical or unethical. Okay, uh, like I said, the French Revolution is alive and well, residing in Connecticut. And um, <laughs> so, but all other uh, circumstances, um, and in, in addition to the one that we mentioned previously, that where the life of the mother is in danger, uh, we're able to uh, discriminate here whether that pragmatically is ethical because the freedom uh, of choice is not there because she can't choose uh, to have it with because she'll lose her freedom. And so with that, again, there is that the ethical um, uh, standard by which we may understand the ethicality of the issue. Uh, any, any last remarks, guys? Uh, we have about one minute to go. Uh, I don't know whether I just didn't understand what you're saying or disagree 100%, but it's one of the two. Okay. Uh, I accept that, and uh, it's a topic that will remain open, and we can revisit it again. Uh, Rick, any final statements? About uh, just a few seconds. Well, if you if you go back, it, it really the uh, case against abortion goes back to the Hippocratic Oath, uh, and is stated there very clearly. Uh, so this is a tradition in Western civilization that has a long, long history. And I mention that because I think in the case of a mother's life being in danger, uh, a dis there are many different circumstances. You know, a mother could be brain dead and, you know, the doctor would be faced with the choice of saving the baby and then having, uh, and killing the mother or allowing the mother to live who's brain dead and allowing the baby to die. These are ethical decisions that have to be handled to some degree on a case-by-case -case basis under okay. a, a I agree with that. Thank care, you, Rick. We're going to have to and continue. And therefore, the family of, uh, involved and the doctor would have input so, into these decisions. I would just leave you that thought as well. Thank you, Rick. And uh, we'll see you again next week on The Philosophical Angle. Thank you for viewing.